If you have a medical emergency and you are unable to communicate, you can still be a critical partner in your treatment and recovery. It comes down to doing one simple yet potentially life-saving thing. And that is making sure you carry your most important card in your wallet. And we're not talking about credit cards. We'll tell you exactly what we're referring to in this week's Health Talk, and we're up next. Hello, I'm Dr. Eric Mazur. And I'm Dr. Andrea Peterson. We're so pleased to have Bob Bepko back on Health Talk today. He's the Administrative Director of Pharmacy Services at the Western Connecticut Health Network. Great to have you back, Bob. Thanks Thank so you. Much. Always have Thank you. wonderful information to share because it's so practical for folks at home and it affects almost everybody. Almost everybody. So today we're going to talk about knowing your medicines and, and using a medication card. Yes. And that's the most important card in your wallet. Yes. What's a medication card? <laughs> uh, a medication card, uh, it's, it's a small card. Uh, I have a sample here. I don't know if to show if they can see that. Uh, it's all in your chest yeah, and show it to us. in front of you. There. How's Perfect. that? Great. Okay, a simple card. It's, about the, it's the size of a credit card. Exactly. That, that actually fits in your wallet. And on that, your name, address, phone number, and the list of your medications. How many times have, have you driven down the road and you've heard an ambulance come flying by you? That person's probably going to the emergency room uh, and may or may not be conscious. And you've got to start, uh, the physicians in the, in, in the emergency room have to start treating this patient. Well, a good way to start that uh, treatments is they need to know what kind of medications you're on. If you're unconscious, if you don't have a family member with you, that can, can talk about your medications, uh, you can have some issues. Uh, if, if you're on, say, a drug like uh, Warfarin or Coumadin and you fall, uh, you break a hip, uh, you, you, you've got a, a brain injury, you hit your head hit your first, head. Um, you could be bleeding internally. So how do we treat that? How do we how do we, how get, do we even begin to suspect it? exactly how, 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 do, how do we get the, the, the blood to stop uh, and if you have a, a list of your medications on you and they see that you're taking warfarin or coumadin um, they can react fast and, and treat that and about yeah, that so includes over-the-counter medicines as well as yes it does so if you're taking an aspirin a day or you take Advil two tablets four times a day that should be on the card That's too. That's got to be on the card also because that can affect, you know, everybody take, I shouldn't say everybody, lots of people take low dose aspirin for, to improve their cardiovascular, their blood system. And if you do take that low dose every day, and you may notice if, uh, if you're a male and you're shaving, you know, your face daily, or if you're a female and you're shaving your legs, you, and you nick yourself, and just, boy, that aspirin is working. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's taking me the a little bit longer. Out. Exactly. Longer. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And so in the setting of significant trauma, that can be an important thing. It's very important. You know, I, I can't agree with you more strongly. If a patient comes into the emergency room, the emergency room doctors, as a general rule, maybe we should say something about don't have access to your medical record. That is correct. Why don't they? We have all these computers. Uh, everybody thinks, they say, well, I've had patients say this to me. Just look it up. Why are you asking me this question? Why don't we just look it up? Different hospital systems have one, could have multiple computer systems in their network. Your physician's office has a different system also. If you go to your orthopedics, He's got a, or she's got a different system in their office, and unfortunately, nothing talks to one another. So in other words, I can't go from the emergency room, call up your record from your primary care, sometimes, I shouldn't say, but oftentimes, can't call that record up and see what's going on. Right. You're starting we're, we're, pretty blank. We're, we're starting to make progress in that area where a physician associated with a particular hospital We'll have access, they'll be on the same system, but we're not there yet. And that brings up another point. It may not only be emergencies when you're in an ambulance, but if you're traveling, yes. if, in your, if you're in a different city or state, 
where your health system is not located, you may have something that's important enough you need to see a physician but may not be an emergency. You still need that list of medications. You still need that list. Even within the same system, when you just see a different doctor who may not have the same medical record, knowing medicines is so important and trying to remember them, I think, is, is, is a fool's errand. Right. Uh, Lying I, on memory is very imperfect. What dose of Synthroid are you taking? Well, well it used to be this, used to be and it was that. Right, and, and, but it's purple now, and, and you know, you got to have the strengths, and you got to continually update that. Yeah, so exactly what should go on the card? <clears throat> you should have the name of the medication. Brand versus generic, does it matter? Uh, you, either or, either or, because your healthcare professionals will know. The dose. The exact dose. The exact dose. Not, not one pill. Right, exactly. You the, want it in MG or yes. grains or not too often in and grains I, anymore, but in milligrams. Right. And how many times a day you're taking it. Okay. And they, for every medicine. So if I'm taking a, a baby aspirin once a day, it should say aspirin 65 milligrams once daily. That is correct. Even the time of day might be helpful. If you're taking, I think, uh, Diphenhydramine or Benadryl, 25 milligrams at night, you should write at night. Yes, yes. The time that you take it, you should, you should have that there also. Yeah, the more details, the better. Because it can get confusing. And again, if you're taking over-the-counters, if you're taking supplements, write those down too. Yeah. Right. Having all that information will never put, be a bad thing for your it's healthcare never a provider. Bad. The more information you have is not a bad thing. So it may be helpful to have somebody write down blood pressure pill, thyroid pill. I mean, the doctors may know that. But there are some pills that are used for lots of different things. So uh, I can foresee instances where somebody's getting a certain drug that might be for anxiety or to, to, to slow down a heart rate, and it might be for angina. Yes. And so it might be well useful to write down the, the, the reason Why you're you taking got the, it. This. Why you're taking it. And that and, can especially be important in an emergency. It may be useful to have a separate list of your medical conditions and your doctors, but if you have on the card, you're taking this for this condition, that at least clues in those yes. doctors as to some of the medical conditions you what have. They're, what, they're trying, what they have to take in mind when they're trying to come up with Absolutely. a treatment for your emergency situation. What about allergies or bad reactions to medications? Uh, that's a tricky it, because a lot of people, you know, if you take a medication, you're supposed to take it on a full stomach, take it on an empty stomach, and you're, you've got a stomach ache. Well, I must be allergic to it. Well, you know what? You're not allergic to it. You didn't follow directions. Take it with food, and it won't bother you. But don't effect. say that's an allergy because you're, you have the opportunity to treat certain disease states with a, with a medication, and if you say, oh, I'm allergic to that, we may have to go to something different. It, it less may effect, have more, less, effective. less effective, more side effects. Yeah. I think I, that's really important. So when you're thinking about bad reactions, if you're writing down, write down what the reaction that is correct. was. Yeah. Because especially in an emergency, if it was some nausea, it still may be worth giving that medication. If you had anaphylaxis, that's a different which is shock. That's a, which right. is shock, and that's a different story. Trouble breathing, yeah, yeah that's a different. No, I, I, that's something that I think we all struggle with, with doctor, as doctors with our patients is that the difference between side effects and allergies. And allergies can be life-threatening, so we're certainly not going to give you a drug to which you're absolutely allergic. If you had a side effect from a drug, well, those don't happen all the time. That drug may be very important in your care, and we may want to give it. So I, I think people need to be careful about very saying, careful. I'm allergic to something. Absolutely. And I think, that I, I think they ought to discuss this with their doctor. If you th really think you're allergic to penicillin, have that discussion and see whether the doctor agrees that that's an allergic reaction. Right. And, and because oftentimes you'll get patients, well, I'm allergic. I can't take any of this. I can't take it because I'm allergic to it all. But then when you sit down and you go through the process, they're really not allergic to it. Yeah. And, and come on, we're, we're here to help you. You know, this, this drug is going to work, and it's got the least amount of side effects. And Bob, in terms of this card, the, uh, shouldn't, we, shouldn't they tell their loved ones who might be coming to the emergency room where it is that they have such yes. a card? Yes. So say something about and that. And it's, uh, it's important that uh, your significant other, your husband, your wife, or your children, 
uh, know what medications you're, you're taking, and they're part of your health uh, advisor, uh, you know, so, so to speak, because they have to translate, uh, they have to tell the physicians what you've been doing, what you've been taking. You can't be, you can't be there on a gurney being a mystery with nobody, you know, people not knowing what, what, what kind of medication you're taking. It just creates so many more steps right. to go through. It, it may delay you, treatment. Uh, and, that can, and that can save your life or not. That's correct. What do you advise patients about best practice when they are started on a new medication or an old medication is stopped or a dose is changed? I, I would th think that uh, it's important that you do keep uh, available past medications that you took because you can see the physicians will know that well, they, they tried a particular dose of, uh, like, say, lisinopril for high blood pressure, and the 10 milligrams didn't work, 20 milligrams didn't work, so they either decided to add another medication to help that out or discontinue lisinopril altogether. But it's important for that past history. So ideally on the card or your record, you'd put a line through it and then say Stop. discontinued and right. the date. Right, right. In this modern era, where most people carry cell phones, which you can put almost an infinite amount of data into, uh, are, if, are there apps that we're adapting? Should we be, should we be adopting a standard uh, app that allows us to do this right on our cell phone? You, uh, in, you can go to uh, your page where it says emergency contacts, and you can put in your medications there. The only problem sometimes is that you may not have your phone with you. Yeah. But that is, it is a useful tool. This is a question. If you do that, do you lock it out when you have a code, or is that always available? You hit emergency, it's always available. Okay. So, so, so you do have to be careful about that. Yes. As most people put a security code on their phone. You don't want to you know, put it in notes where you're going to lock it out of, uh, of, uh, people of, of the People obtaining the information. It. And you may be unconscious when you are in the... Uh, and, and, and nobody wants to think this way, but accidents do happen. We wear a seatbelt when we drive in the car because we know that can save our lives. Right. This is another thing we can do to, to, can, to help. To help save our lives. Give your physicians Absolutely. the opportunity to help you. Absolutely. That is a good, good note to end things on. This, this is another so way to help yourself. Exactly. We can't control everything. But the things that we can control, we should do. Absolutely. To keep ourselves healthy. And if you can do that all in a time before a crisis strikes, you'll be in better shape. You'll be better prepared. Absolutely. Very, very wise information, Bob. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. I want to thank our very popular guest, Bob Mepko, for joining us on the set today and, again, providing all of us with, I think, uh, important and uh, generalizable information. Very relevant. Very relevant to all of us. If you have comments or questions for us, please do email them to us at healthtalk at wchn.org. Andrew and I, I would just love to hear from would you. Would love to hear from you. So thanks for watching. Stay well.